Yokel and MG of Landerms. Hello, people on the other side of a screen to your favorite shop dwelling Sarah here with a Gump review. Today I have the 2022 Subaru Forester Wilderness Edition. And for those of you that were confused, Gump is Forester Gump. I have a Gump. His name is Forester Gump. Today I'm going to take this thing off-road and see if it will live up to its badges and lifted appearance. But first, let's take a look underneath and see what makes it special. Come on. Hey, there's my flashlight. I was looking for this. Starting in the rear, first things first, I'm going to cut straight to business. I got some important things to discover. Like this one also has a bee box. Lots of inlets. That's, that's a very ergonomical designed bee box. But what matters is this rear diff, which is a fin to cover, FYI. That's fancy. ASMR. Something that I discovered, and this one is a one bolt flange, just this little bolt hold this locking tab in place on the rear diff for the axles. This is the R160 differential, which is an open rear diff. And that's where I think some of the problem lies is this doesn't have as robust of an all wheel drive drivetrain as Subaru's once used to. Now this does have torque vectoring capabilities, but that is done via the ABS system to stop one wheel when it starts to spin. Still doesn't fix the fact that this diff is open. But I will say without giving away free advertising, I did do some digging around on the Google and there is a company that makes a torque locker for this rear diff. It does have a multi-link upper wishbone rear suspension, a coilover strut design, a really dinky rear anti-sway bar. It's about as big around as my index finger. The uh, aluminum knuckle, everything else is made out of stamped steel. What better way to get a look at symmetrical all-wheel drive than from underneath? Problem is, even though this is a proper longitudinally mounted configuration for the drivetrain, it has a 60-40 split, which means it's actually front wheel drive biased, despite its drivetrain configuration. Thankfully, Subaru put actual plastic down here for an off-road vehicle, which slides over rocks a little bit easier than felt covered cardboard, which is typically what you see on a lot of new vehicles. In theory, you would think that some of those cars with the cardboard felt underbelly protection would require a maintenance shaving. You have to shave the underside of your car. It's, it's good maintenance practice for people. I mean, you think it would apply to cars too. Okay, that is not good. This transmission pan is just completely exposed. You got this heavy duty skid plate up front, but that is just all exposed right there. See what I'm talking about? There's already a twig under here and I haven't even taken it off road yet. Imagine if that was bigger, it would have stabbed your transmission pan. Does it look like I'm holding the car on my head? Sorry. Anyway, you only have one transmission available for the SK Generation Forester, and that is the Lineartronic CVT. The SJ, previous generation, used to be able to get a six-speed manual with the non-turbo. That was a real treat. But this one has been revised for the Wilderness Edition and now has a 411 final drive ratio versus the regular Forester's is a 3.7. So that is an upgrade. It's got some other tweaks in here on the gearing as well. Gearing, more like coning, disc, disking, coning. Up front, there's a L-arm strut style front suspension, pretty rugged lower control arm. It's fully boxed all the way around and a beefy front anti-sway bar, aluminum end link and tie rods, a steel knuckle, that right there is what's up. Nice rugged aluminum skid plate. You just need to have another one right there and it would be perfect. But that is nice to see at least. Ah, and they were thoughtful and put an engine oil drain in it too. Okay, it's time for the braking test. Nobody behind me? Ready? Go. Whoa, we got fishy. Whoa, that thing got wild. <laughs> uh, 
epic. That was one of the most fun braking tests ever. It got a little bit squirrely. The added ride height with these tires definitely made a difference over a standard Forester. <laughs> it breaks good, but it was a wild ride. <laughs> They are a dual piston caliper with a 12.4 inch rotor up front. The wheels are a matte black, kind of old school look to them. I love the look of these wheels. I bet you these would look so good, powder coated gold. They're a 17 by seven and they're wrapped in some Yokalander geolandums. <laughs> what? They're a 225 60 17 geolandum and lurder. Yokalandum geolanderms. Lanterns. Also, now that you have a better look at it, in case you were wondering, the struts are not anything fancy. You don't have any Bill Steins or Fox or anything like that. Check that out. It's got a little aluminum cover over here in the wheel well, so everything is fully enclosed. In the rear, the Yokohama Zoolanders are also the exact same size. Same with the wheel, it's square stance. But your rotor goes down to an 11.2 inch with a single pot caliper. Subaru, you did put some hairy cardboard in this thing in the wheel wells. Hmm, that's a treat to try to clean. I like this though, the rugged plastic on the bottom with the gold Forester logo right here. It's kind of like a coppery gold, it's pretty. In the name of science, it's now time to give it the beans. I'm surprised this actually has Sport Sharp on the SI drive. If you're wondering what the SI drive is, it's the drive modes for a Subaru. I'm surprised though, it's a non-turbo model of Sport Shark, and then it has Intelligent. No Sport, it's either all or nothing. I kind of like that. It does have paddle shifters in the back of steering wheel, and to turn off your traction control, they actually give you a physical button, which is nice. You have to go into the menu to do it. So I'm gonna leave it in drive mode and Sport Sharp, and uh, see what this thing can do. Ready? Go. Come on. Go. 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 Who keeps the fake shifts really close together and sport sharp. I like that. It's not slow. It's like border. It's teetering into slow, but it's adequate. I like that sport sharp keeps those fake shifts really close together though. Pops the hood. Pops. Oh, there's no struts. I thought there was gonna be a strut. Weird. It's gray under the hood. There's just visible overspray. No, 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 no. No, you don't do that, Subaru. Why? Look at up here. There's just overspray. Oh, no, no, no. Hello, and welcome underneath the hood of that Forester. It is powered by none other than the FB25DI. It is a direct injected all aluminum 2.5 liter flat four that produces 182 horsepower at 5,800 RPM and 176 pound-feet of torque at 4,400 RPM. The number one thing I see on the internet in the comment sections about modern Subarus is confusion about the engine in here. There's people that relate this to an EJ series engine from 30 years ago when they're talking about the technology in it. So let's clear some things up. For pretty much my entire lifetime, Subaru engines started with E in the engine code. Now their modern vehicles all start with F, which they designated as future boxer. That's why they chose the letter F. I think it's just because it comes after E naturally. Anyway, this engine in particular has a 12 to one compression ratio. It is over squared at 94 to 90 millimeter bore and stroke. It has dual ABCS, which is Subaru's version of active variable valve timing. Still the same great recipe that Subaru has under the hood of having a horizontally opposed flat four, keeping the center of gravity nice and low and creating some fun sounds in the process with that box rumble, but it's changed quite a bit over the years. Like, look, now it's got a plastic intake manifold instead of wood like you would have in 1873. Now, the one thing these are susceptible to though is carbon buildup on the back of the valves because it is only direct injection, does not have any port injection to help those clean. So I'm gonna be doing a video here pretty soon, probably on my channel, walnut blasting my intake valves on the Forester if anyone is interested to see that. All they need to do now is just offer a turbo version of one of these again. It's all they're missing. I 
I'm sure all of you are watching this for the same reason why I wanted to drive this thing and do a review on it. You want to see if it's any better off-road than a standard Forester. And I'm very curious too. I want to know if it makes up the hill that I test vehicles on because I don't think it's going to do it even with the little upgrades that they did to the Forester. Which is sad because I own a Forester. I'm not hating on them. I'm just being tough. It's tough love because I own one. This Forester does have a dual mode X mode which is its fancy off-roading uh, robot configuration. And you have snow and dirt and deep snow and mud. So for this hill, I'm gonna use snow and dirt still on my X mode. Uh, I do have a front facing camera which shows up right here on the dash independent from the rear camera which shows up in your infotainment system. No point in trying to do anything with the traction control because it doesn't let you adjust it when you're using your dual mode X mode because robots are smarter than people. We will all soon find that out once Skynet becomes self aware. Okay, come on Forrester, you got this. It's got increased approach angle and departure angle and breakover from the standard Forrester. 23 and a half degrees approach. So it should be no issue. I'm gonna take it slow. Oh yeah, okay. Okay. Oh, this forester just said fuck this hill. <laughs> yeah, find me. Good job, Gump. Yay! <laughs> they did, they improved the Forester. It just said fuck that hill and it just climbed it like a boss. Man, if it, oh, it's got, okay. It automatically engages the descent control. I didn't even do anything. And a pretty good speed too. Nice. Something else that Subaru did for the wilderness model and only on this wilderness model is they improved its towing capabilities over a regular Forester. So this one will tow 3,000 pounds, plus it has trailer stability control built in and the roof rack on the top, it'll haul more cargo too. So it has an 800 pound static load or 220 pounds moving. I think that means dynamic, but they made it more capable in all kinds of other ways that would be useful for someone that's gonna do adventure time. Like I'm doing right now. Whoa. All right, I got two wheels off the ground that time. Handle it, Gump, handle it. Woohoo! It's doing it. This is gonna test the brake over for sure right here. Ooh, doesn't seem to be an issue right here. This is not bad for a Gump and beans. Go Rally Gump Go! I like that the stability aids are not getting too invasive. They're still there, a little annoying here and there, but for the most part, they're letting me have fun out here. Now, as far as the interior goes, it's nice in here. These seats are so soft, so, so soft. They're like made out of walrus ash cheeks or something, but they're so comfy. They're heated up front. The rears aren't heated, which I would think for the price of this thing, you'd at least get heated rear seats. That'd be nice. Other than that, the infotainment system does what it needs to do. The sound system in here is pretty decent. Bull steering. Yes, not bad. Actually not bad. I, I don't really have a lot of complaints other than I feel like Subaru is kind of only giving us 50% in the performance department. I feel like they're capable of so much more, but their core demographic of buyer doesn't really care for performance vehicles. And that's kind of a weird thing for a company that has made its history on enthusiast vehicles and rally bred vehicles. So I think they're at a weird turning point right now as a manufacturer. And I'm scared because of the fact that they just came out their new Solterra EV Subaru is known for having symmetrical all-wheel drive and boxer engines. That's what makes them unique. I don't know where that fits with EVs. I don't know how they're going to make themselves stand out anymore with electric drivetrains, unless they figure out a way to make a unique electric drivetrain configuration that is quintessential Subaru that no one else does. They're just going to be another appliance. Fuel economy wise, uh, this little off-road gump averaged in the mid to upper 20s. 
It could be a little bit better considering my Forrester XT when it was new and unmodified averaged that. And that's uh, almost a 70, 80 horsepower more than this. So, mm, but all in all, it's a great little go anywhere camping recreation hobby type vehicle and it's comfy. And I think uh, if you live in a snowy environment, this would definitely be a top choice. Without further ado, we're gonna do the bean score. You all know what that is for. And this Gump right here is getting a rating of 0.9 bean. It just, it lacks a little bit of oomph from a get go, but once it's going, it's adequate. It's decent power for what it is. It, they desperately need a turbo version though, and hopefully we get one in the next generation. Next though is cookie score. It's assessment of value, what you spend for what you get. And uh, this thing sitting in the mid thirties is getting a rating of 2.6. It's basically right in the middle, average score for what you're spending. And uh, the only thing I could see making this better is if they would have added an upgraded rear diff for the off-road model. That would have been really nice. It's got adequate tech on here. So next though is the mechanic score. It's a rating of one to five wrenches, five being the easiest vehicle in the world to work on, one being an abysmal pile of shit. And this is getting a rating of 3.6. I think these are fairly easy to work on. And my personal experience with Subarus is as long as you don't do 5,000 RPM dumps on them, which you can't do with a CVT anyway, they are fairly reliable vehicles. I haven't had any issues with mine and this is my second Subaru I've ever owned. So I'm here in the field to give you the meatball score. The assessment of a vehicle's off-road capabilities to tackle rock shaped meatballs. And this gump right here is getting a rating of 2.9 meatballs in a leaf microphone. Back to, back to you, Studio Sarah. Lastly though is the penguin score. It's assessment of one to five penguins based on how much I personally like a vehicle. And this Forester Wilderness is getting a rating of 3.2 penguins. I love the front end on this generation. I like the styling of the Forester. And this kind of makes sense for what you'd use a Forester for. I don't know. I think this would be a beast in the snow. And yeah, I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.